Good afternoon, Greg from Avaya. How are you doing this morning? Yeah, I'm great. Thanks, Patrick. How are you? I'm very, I'm very well. Thanks. Really, thanks very much for joining us in this webinar. And I know you guys at Avaya have got a big focus on this topic, and it's a particularly interesting episode that, that you've come up with today. And the topic we're looking at is, is the the back to front of of customer experience. So, so first of all, I just wanted to under, understand. As I said, I know it's something that you guys at Avaya are really focusing on. Why is it important to connect the back office and the front office from, from a customer experience perspective? Yeah, well, thanks. Uh, thanks, first of all, for uh, for inviting us. I'm, I'm pleased to be here. But yeah, absolutely, Patrick. I mean, what we are seeing um, from our research and from conversations with, uh, with customers is that customer experience, it's just doesn't stop in the contact centre. As you know, for many, many years, Avaya have been a leading vendor in the contact centre space. Um, however, when we talk about customer experience, it doesn't just end with those customer contacts. It's also about how do we actually deliver that product or service to the end customer? And that will inevitably involve the back office. Um, it may even involve um, collaboration with third party providers as well. So it's about actually joining that end to end process together, the, the front end piece where we're talking to the customers, but also the back end fulfillment piece, joining that together and giving the, uh, the customer visibility of that across the entire customer journey. So when we talk about this, really, and we talk about intelligent experiences, we're looking at this from two two lenses. The first lens is the the marketplace. What what are we doing? Interact when we interact with those customers, we need to make sure that obviously we're providing the service they expect from a, an interaction perspective. But we also need to look at it from the lens of the workplace. And how do we collaborate together? Um, again, internally and also with third party suppliers as well, potentially, to ensure that we actually deliver the experience the customer is looking for. It's not contact centres that serve customers. It's the whole enterprise that serves customers. So linking in those back office processes into the customer journey to ensure that the customer has the most up to date information um, at their fingertips. How often do we contact a contact centre to find out, well, wh where are we with a particular um, a particular process? Where's my claim? Where's my package? Um, all of those things are easily solved by ensuring that we incorporate the back office into that customer journey and notify the customer as and when there, there are um, particular events taking place. So bringing all of those things together, that's how we believe that um, the back office can also help the front office and the, the entire customer journey. It's not just about thinking in silos, it's about looking across the entire business. Yeah, and, and I know that you guys at Avaya, you have a lot of customers that, that come to you and, and ask for help with, with customer service. And as you said, historically, maybe the focus has been on those, those customer facing front office elements. And obviously, you've thought a lot about connecting all the pieces of the jigsaw. So from your experience, what, what happens if, if businesses or organisations fail to align sort of the, the customer facing element and, and the back office aspects of the business, whether, whether those were any of those examples you were mentioning in terms of logistics or, or finance? What, what are the negatives if they haven't aligned and what are the potential benefits if you if you can get it right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, when we, we look at the back office, um, we can see that actually not many organisations are, are tackling this problem head on. Um, it is an area that consumers feel um, is, is a big issue. Again, when we've surveyed customers in the past, we can see that things like timely delivery, for example, are one of the top three um, elements that customers use to decide on who to do business with. Um, that logistics and that delivery has a huge impact on customer experience, and yet it's very often overlooked. Um, and when we talk about back office delays and issues, they're still uh, one of the highest um, factors for customer dis dissatisfaction. Um, and what happens is that actually most organisations are failing to acknowledge this and failing to identify 
that this is an area they need to take a look at. You know, only um, 14 percent of the back offices have, have really automated any of their their um, their back office processes to, to service level agreements. You know, there's only 28 percent who've actually tried to integrate any of that into their customer journey. So it's a huge area that rather than just focusing on the, the contact center piece, we think as in addition to that, we also need to be thinking, how do we actually bring these other processes um, into play? And if you get it wrong, well, it really does impact everybody in that, that, um, that customer journey. It impacts the customer because of course, they often have multiple interactions to solve a problem. They'll often see delays um, trying to, to um, resolve their query. And what that generally means is that they'll then start to contact the contact center again uh, more frequently just to find out, well, where is, is this in the process? And that, of course, has an impact on the contact center. The, the, uh, the traffic will increase because we're getting repeat callers in to find out um, where things are going. Of course, the contact center will also be the ones that will end up having to deal with those complaints. And so they bear the brunt of, of customer dissatisfaction. And from a back office perspective, you know, it's, it's not that the back office are the bad guys here. They often don't actually see the full picture. They often are, are handed pieces of work thrown, thrown over the fence to deal with, with no understanding of actually what is the customer journey? Where are we on the customer journey? Um, what, what has been the, the um, problem the customer has, has actually identified, which has triggered off this particular process? So being able to give that visibility to the back office as well um, would, would actually improve things. But at the moment, very often, they have no visibility of what's going on with the customers at all. So if you actually um, look at how what happens when, when we actually turn that around and we start to bring the back office into play, then we can, first of all, see the customer will get better customer service. They'll be fully informed every step of the way of what's happening in their customer journey. That makes their life easier. Um, and of course, ease of use and ease of interaction is a, is a key metric today on customer service. Um, it'll also be resolved faster as well because they know exactly how long something's going to take. They have the expectation and they're informed at every step of the way. From a contact center perspective, of course, the um, agents are not going to have as many complaints to deal with. They're not going to have irate customers who are waiting for updates on where things are. So that means they'll be happier. And again, we've seen research over the years which shows happier agents mean happier customers because they're able to provide exactly the, uh, the service that customers are looking for. Um, they, they come across as happier and therefore the customers get a better service. And that actually goes goes to to one of the areas that we see changing, um, and we see this already in retail and and other uh, and other verticals. But actually, what um, agents are now being asked to do is to provide more empathy, the more of the softer skills, advice to customers. Well, if they're not dealing with some of these these issues. Um, then actually allows them to do that. It gives them more free time and flexibility. And of course, they're happier to engage with, with the customers about how can we help you? How can we help make your decision? From a back office perspective, of course, it means that one, you get they'll get more visibility of what's happening in the back office. How is it linked to that customer journey? How are we improving those service levels as well? So we're making sure that our, uh, our back office is operating in the same way as the contact center has operated in many, many year, for many, many years. The work is distributed more equitably. Um, we have service levels and reporting to be able to ensure that, um, that we know exactly where we cur currently are. And of course, that will improve the relationship between both the back office and the, the contact center. So you know, all told, if you get it right, not only does the customer win, but also the enterprise wins as well because they get happier customers, they get better customer satisfaction, and actually they'll all collaborate a lot better as well. 
No, it, it seems to make perfect sense to me. And I, I don't know about you and probably a huge amount of the viewers of, of this webinar, the amount of times you, you've got in touch with a, with a customer service organization, no matter what means that might be, whether it's telephone or, or on chat, uh, and you've effectively had to your interactions having to be paused while they try and correlate information from from different departments, and, and that's what we're talking about. So, absolutely, it, it, the, the benefits are clearly you clearly established them there. But how, how do you go about connecting those different areas of a business so that they can provide this experience of of a connected enterprise? And the other thing that's important about it is about it it's about it being timely, isn't it? Because effectively, if if I speak to a customer service agent, they can probably get the information from another department. But if it's two days later, it's not particularly helpful to me in that that interaction. Absolutely, yeah. And and really, you know, we need to start by defining what we think good customer experience um, should look like. Um, and actually, interestingly enough, that that good customer experience is also what we want our employees to have because you know, as employees, we're all con consumers as well. We all know what we expect in our private life we want to be able to, to to see exactly the same when we're working and how we collaborate together and work together in an organization so first of all i mean from a customer experience perspective what we're trying to do is we're trying to provide a single we provide a single communication platform across the entire enterprise which provides the customer with a personalized service so first of all we need to make sure that we're treating customers as individuals. So we're tailoring that customer service across the entire enterprise, not just to the contact center, but we're tailoring that service specifically to the individual. So they feel that they are more informed. They are getting the information they require and it is tailored specifically to them. So that's the first piece. Of course, the next piece as well is, is that if you are personalizing that, then it also makes it much easier and much more intuitive to interact with an organization. And as I said, mentioned before, ease of doing business is, is so important today. We're all time poor. Everybody wants to get things done quickly and easily without having to work hard for it. So by personalizing it, we also make it intuitive. We make it much easier for, for the customer to, uh, to interact. And then finally, it's also about being connected as well. Now, from a, a connection perspective, again, it's important that we make sure we provide all of those different omni-channel capabilities that customers are expecting. So the digital channels, the more traditional channels, which could be voice, it could also be our branches as well. So if you have a branch network, that is an e equally important element in a cust in customer experience and a customer journey. It's making sure all of those are connected. But equally importantly, that's also important in the back office as well. Because when a customer, as you just mentioned in that example, the customer rings into the contact center, if an agent doesn't have the information immediately to hand, they need to be able to contact somebody, whoever it is in the enterprise, to find the information quickly. And the quickest way we can do that, or, or rather the, the quickest way we can provide that is, is by making sure we're all on a single platform, but we also provide the agents with the tools to collaborate effectively with anyone in the organization. And that means we can get to the answers quickly. We can provide those answers back to the customer uh, quickly without any undue delay. So that's uh, that's the key, really, is that we're looking at a single platform here. But instead of it being operated in silos, so here's what we do with that platform in the contact center. Here's what happens in the in the back office. It's about actually making sure we get the benefits of a, of a converged platform and bringing it all together. Now, when we talk about the, the types of um, things that are impacting this at the moment, so when we enable that experience from both a customer experience and an employee experience, there are three areas that we think are really starting to, to have an impact on that. And of course, you need a platform which will allow you to take advantage of this and embed this within your, um, your business as and when you are ready. Um, some of these capabilities may not be relevant for everybody today, 
but they will become relevant um, over the coming years. And so you need to be able to make sure that that platform is also open and flexible enough to take advantage of them as they come along. So there are three areas that we believe are important for customer service. Um, and these will look familiar to those, um, those people who are involved in customer experience, but they can be used across the entire enterprise in order to drive that customer experience, both in the front office and into the back office. So the three pillars, um, the first one is omnichannel. Now, of course, omnichannel is something that, um, that's well known in the customer experience field for, for a while. However, this can also be used to, to improve that experience across the enterprise. So let me give you a couple of examples here. So first of all, it's about making sure that the agent has the ability to collaborate with others in the enterprise from their workspace. So they can see a contextual list of subject matter experts in their business um, and their availability um, through presence to be able to reach out to them either via IM or perhaps uh, by phone call and bring them into the conversation. This is really important when we're trying to answer customers' queries because it may not be the, that the agent has the, the knowledge. It might actually be somebody in the back office that they need to talk to. The second element here is about actually using the work assignment and routing capabilities that we have within the contact center, again, across the enterprise to distribute back office work. When we go into the back office, office very um, often, we do not have the visibility of what's going on and we don't, we don't distribute the work evenly and effectively. Well, again, by using work assignment, using that, those skills and attributes that we have, we can make sure that not only do we move work to the right people in the business, but also we can measure and we can ensure they keep to their service level agreements. And then the final um, example here is actually about doing the opposite, bringing the back office to the agent. So if we're doing that work in the back office, the agent needs to know exactly where they are in that process. So things like case management, which are often used in the back office, can also be brought again into the agent workspace for them to be able to see exactly where they are in that customer journey, what process steps they're at and what the next step is going to be. So again, it gives the agent everything they need in order to be able to answer the customer's um, queries. The second area, is around artificial intelligence and also and automation. Again, an area which we're well versed in when it comes to the customer experience, but one which can also be used in the enterprise. So examples here could be, again, using things like sentiment analysis to um, notify people in subject matter experts in the back office that an agent requires their help. So they can see areas where the customer is not happy and may be able to be proactive to reach out to the agent to say, do you need some assistance? Um, another area of AI, which we all think about, is things like virtual assistants and chatbots. Again, lots of um, use cases for that for um, customer experience and customer facing. But that can also be used in the back office to actually help guide um, those back office employees through a process. It could be guided help. It could be surfacing knowledge information to help them perform the, the, the work that they're undertaking. So again, looking to use the same technology, but using it in a different um, focus area. And then finally, um, probably the one area that everybody is interested in is rob robotic process automation or RPA. Again, this is about augmenting the employee's um, workspace and augmenting their, their, uh, their work environment. So taking away the mundane tasks, taking away all that rekeying of multiple different applications with data, being able to pull all that, that together in a process which can be run by a digital employee or a robot. Um, and again, it leaves then the employee, whether that be the agent or whether it be somebody in the back office, it leaves them to deal with the more interesting and the more complex work. The final area is analytics. 
Um, and analytics, again, something that is, is well known in the contact center, lots of reporting in the contact center. We, we, we know everything that goes on in the contact center, but very often is not used in the back office. So again, um, some areas here to consider from an analytics perspective is first of all, is feeding the process and the, the different steps within the process into the customer journey. So that's bringing information again, back from the back office into the agent's workspace so they can see exactly where, where we are on the journey, what's happened. And again, able to be able to provide that up-to-date information to the customer. The second area is about taking advantage of real-time analytics. So being able to identify using things like speech analytics, real-time speech analytics or text analytics, identify issues which perhaps the back office need to solve. So maybe there's a problem with um, your website or your mobile application, which has resulted in an increase of traffic into the contact center. Very often an individual agent or, um, or team of agents is not going to be able to identify that. But real time analytics, um, whether that be speech or text, can surface those trends up so that somebody can um, actually uh, respond to that um, and go away and make some actions to resolve the issue. And then finally, in the back office, um, there's also desktop process analytics. So here we're looking at are our employees following the processes that we've defined? If they're not, maybe that might be an area that we can provide additional training, um, or perhaps it could be an area which may, we need to feed into our process improvement uh, programs to actually make that a more streamlined process. Again, those analytics of exactly what is the employee doing, that, feeds, that provides insight which um, otherwise perhaps they may not have. So those are the three areas that we think not only can they make a big difference in the contact center, but also across the entire enterprise and can bring the back office into that customer journey. I, I, I suppose there, Greg, it's just just following on from what you were saying before. It's just as important to provide this to the staff internally within enterprise, as, as I said, as just the customer examples. But you were talking about, you know, agent augmentation before and being able to help them and provide additional materials and insights. And I, I know that's something that I've seen demonstrated before at events that Avaya have been attending. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, it's important that, you know, I, I think as we as we see automation evolve um, from the customer side, we'll see the rise um, further rise, actually, of, of virtual assistants integrating customer service into the likes of um, Apple Siri or Amazon Alexa and, and so on to make it more natural for, for, uh, for, for customers. But again, it's not just for the customer. It is also about how do we provide that um, assistance to, uh, to agents, to, um, to use something like a virtual assistant to, um, to be able to um, bubble up information in a knowledge management platform, perhaps or use real-time sentiment analysis to identify, actually, this customer's not happy and automatically notify a supervisor, just so that the supervisor can provide some additional assistance to the agent to say, do you need any help here? Would you like me to uh, get involved and, and assist with this? Um, again, at the moment, that's down to the agent to ask for help very often, whereas by using um, automation and AI, we can actually we can make sure those notifications are uh, are popped up onto the uh, supervisor's desktop, so they have that ability to uh, to just reach out to the agent and provide coaching. Um, it could also be again providing coaching to the agent in real time. So rather than them having to gain the experience, we can have AI sitting in the background saying to the agent, actually you're talking over the customer. Let the customer finish first before answering, or maybe you're talking too quickly, um, or perhaps you know identifying words and phrases in a web chat, which um, lets them know that actually the customer's showing signs of not being particularly happy here. Here's perhaps some suggested approaches to take. So AI and automation again is is going to be uh, become even more. Um, more critical, but it's not just about how we use that to provide the customer service. It's about how can we augment our agents' um, uh, capabilities as well. 
And then on the analytics side of things, again, this is um, key to ensure that we're providing informed responses, not only to, um, to our customers, making sure that they know exactly when certain events have happened, keep them alerted to what's happening with their product or service from the, or from the uh, business, but also um, understanding exactly what happened in those journeys. So using things like voice um, analytics and text analytics, along with, with more traditional ma ma uh, methods of voice of the customer through surveys to identify, well, actually, how did we do? You know, if we rely just a, a solely on service, uh, sorry, on surveys, then actually we're only getting a very small response rate generally um, for probably from customers who are either end of that distribution curve. You know, they're really happy customers or the really unhappy customers. Using things like um, speech and text analytics, we can identify well what happened in the rest of the time. How can we um, identify where customers we're unhappy and make improvements to our, our journey. And, you know, there are there are a couple of, um, of great examples that we have with customers who are already doing this. So, you know, from the, um, the connected journey perspective, we have a customer in, um, in um, out in Croatia, Croatia Telecom, who are already deploying exactly the same types of distribution technology we have we've had in the contact center for many years to also distribute work into the back office. So they're making sure that they're keeping to SLAs. They then have visibility of exactly what's currently happening. And if you link that to a case management system as well, and all of that information can be used to, um, to, pro to provide notifications to customers. We can tell them exactly when something is going to be fixed. We can tell, tell them exactly which step of the process we're at and how long that typically is going to take. Again, it makes them much more informed. It makes them a much more personal journey. Um, and from an omni-channel perspective, again, we've already seen with customers, I mentioned about linking digital to physical. We have a customer out in the Middle East, um, a high-end jeweler that is actually um, linking their social media presence and the chat bot who asks customers on um, about questions about particular pieces of jewellery they might be looking for. Nobody's going to buy a high end piece of jewellery over the Internet and spend, you know, tens of thousands of pounds on something without actually seeing it in person. So they actually link that customer to their nearest store and then be, actually bring the customer via a, a, um, a concierge service bring that customer to the store so they can see the piece in person and actually make the transaction there and then. So again, that's a great example of how they've linked the physical world with the digital world to give the, the signature customer experience they wanted to provide. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I suppose the, the capabilities are, are sort of unimagined. And, and you've used a couple of examples there that I wouldn't have thought of traditional customer service examples but but the possibilities are are endless with that once you manage to connect those different systems indeed yeah and and really it comes back to making sure that you have a, a single platform um, that can can provide that you know there's no reason why um, the technology that's that's available in the contact center has to reside only in the contact center by having a, a centralized platform, a single platform for all your business communications end to end, it means that you can use that, that technology where it's needed um, to not only improve the employee experience, but also, of course, improve that, that customer experience. And secondly, the other part of that is as well is being able to embed that into your business processes. So having the openness, having the interfaces to allow you to take events from other third party solutions or the third party CRM systems, process um, flows, um, case management systems to use that to trigger off communications workflows, which are actually going to go out to our end customers and keep them informed on, on every step of the way. Absolutely. So, so great. If, if some of the viewers want to find out more about that, that concept of the of the connected enterprise and and the back of and, and front of, of customer experience and some of the examples that you've got from a buyer about how you're using emerging technology to sort of 
improve that process? What, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, um, the best way that they can do that is certainly is, is to um, register, obviously, for their interest on, for this webinar, but also they can go to the avaya.com um, website. Um, they can get in touch there. If you're already an Avaya customer, then please reach out to your, uh, your partner reseller or to your direct high touch um, um, account manager in Avaya. And we'll be happy to, uh, to not only have the conversations, but also to be able to demonstrate this technology in our customer experience center um, and show exactly what uh, a good customer experience or an exceptional customer experience could look like for that, uh, that particular customer. Excellent. Well, great. For the meantime, thank you so much for joining me in this webinar. Thanks very much, Patrick.